Sketching is more fun when you have a buddy. I was painting this while she was sketching this, probably for a comic book. It doesn't really matter what you sketch or where you sketch. Just get out and sketch. And if you want to see how these purple mountains made all the difference in this process, stick around. Getting to this place was quite the adventure too. We drove for six miles on this windy, dusty, dirty road. I'm not complaining though, just look at that view. And the destination, what a great place. It would have been easier to snap a photo and leave, but drawing it helps me to enjoy it more. Today I'm starting with Derwent Inktense pencils on a 5x7 ampersand pastel board. You've seen me use these pastel boards in other videos, and I still like them. The scratchy texture allows a lot of different layers of pencil, and a little later on you'll see me use Derwent drawing pencils as a layer over the space of liquidified ink tents. I'm blacking in the color of these middle ground and foreground trees with some of this cadmium yellow color. The aspens on the right and the willows on the front add some really great balance to the mountains that will be on the top left. And I'm not too worried about details at this point. The paint just kind of runs. I'm just trying to establish the composition of big shapes. Part of the stage is just thinking through how the painting is going to look. And some of the marks are my way of exploring how to translate what I'm seeing into a flat, two-dimensional surface. It's something I'll probably practice for years to come. The initial blue mountains are barely visible, so I opted to really accelerate things by adding in this dusky purple color. The yellow is a warmer color than the purple, and that helps with perspective. And I think it's nice that purple and yellow are complementary colors on the color wheel. This pencil is the light olive color. It's a yellowish green and on the color wheel it's a split complementary color to violet. It also happens to be a good color for the distant pine trees on that mountain. Mother Nature is the best artist I know. She's really good at picking colors. And I think this brighter beech green for this foreground grass and the aspens adds some punch to it all. And then the distance, I keep it a little bit more muted just to push it back. Now that I have the underpainting complete, I'm going to move to the details and start using the Derwent drawing pencils. They aren't water soluble, but they are very opaque, which will be nice. This is also a peek at how I rigged up this contraption for filming and drawing at the same time. Kind of cool. These particular pencils have a really soft core and on this rough surface they lay down nice and thick. This color I'm using is called Smoke Blue and as you can see I'm allowing that original purple layer to peek through and stay visible. And now I'm switching to the color called Chinese White to color in some of that snow that's still on the mountains. Using multiple colors like this helps keep the mountains looking less flat and more realistic. So I think it was good to have that bolder purple color as an underpainting. Plus the cooler colors of this blue and purple make the mountains feel like they're further back. Because with atmospheric perspective you're actually looking through air which is blue and so things in the distance look cooler and bluer. The ability to do these multiple layers and many colors is what I like best about this pastel board and the rough surface. So I don't have as many color choices I'd like to have in the Derwent drawing line of pencils. So I had to switch to using some of these Prisma color pencils. I actually like trying lots of different materials and seeing how they work in different situations. Here I'm back to using the Derwent drawing pencil and it's the wheat color for the distant beach um, that is around this water. I really like how thick it lays on here. That's a really cool feature. And then I can use the same stuff for the dirt path that's closer to me on this side of the water. One of the things I hope to do with these videos I'm sharing with you is to not only go out and paint in interesting and beautiful places, but also to 
try to explore the use of different art materials and how they can produce some fun art pieces. I like how this one is turning out. I'm obviously not your traditional outdoor or as some say plain air painter because I don't use oil paints on a canvas placed on an easel. I sit in a chair and sketch. That doesn't mean I don't like oil paintings. Some of my favorite paintings are from famous oil painters and some contemporary ones too. The plein air movement is really cool. But for me, dealing with paints is too messy and kind of a hassle for me. I love, for example, that I can put my hand on my painting almost immediately without messing anything up, including my clothes. So I like water-soluble pencils and pastels the most because of the painterly effects I can get with them. It's a unique experience of drawing, sketching, and painting all in one. I can never get the hang of traditional watercolor paint. I like the unpredictable happy accidents that can happen in watercolor, but the pencils allow me to have a bit more control, which my personality appreciates. Painting this water in this lake so that it shows the reflections of the colors that are all around it and from the sky and the trees, it's kind of tricky. I'm trying to make sure it looks like flat water in a lake rather than a vertical wall of water. One way to do that is to have the distance water lighter than the closer shores of the water. That's why I'm contrasting the light blue with the greener, warmer colors that I'm also putting in the water. Usually the lighter blue water would be in the distance and the warmer green water would be closer. Sometimes the shadows from the trees and even the clouds that are moving overhead affect that. That is one of the difficult things about painting outside. The light is constantly changing and the shadows are always moving. These foreground willows will help give depth to the painting as well. I think that's why it's good to start with a good composition. Again, with these layers, I'm careful not to cover all of the underlying colors in the bottom layers. I like to just make sure the colors peek through. Adding the light highlights and darker shadows helps the overall feel of the painting and the variety of colors keeps it interesting. Punching up the sides of these tree trunks with white would be difficult on regular paper, but there are other ways to achieve it like using an eraser which I've also shun, shown in other videos. I'm glad you're watching and hopefully learning and practicing art as well. If you like the style of these videos or have been inspired to explore more art, give this video a like and maybe it'll help other people find it as well. Thanks for exploring art with me.